<laughs> well, welcome to Ultimate Plus, um, and I'm here with Tara Bentoven, and I thought I'd catch her for a quick interview and ask her about her experiences in the BFS, because you've just, re you've just resigned now. Yeah, and it's you? six years, fantastic years, I really enjoyed it. I didn't quarrel with anybody too much. I mean, imagine keeping people like Biggio, Trevor Wire and me apart, you know, I mean, they're good friends, but I managed six years, and I did everything I wanted to do. I hope that Wissam will do things that I didn't manage to do. We've, we've kept the membership up, increased it a bit, but not sufficiently, so I'm hoping he's gonna do that. But over these years, we started off with the Floskers, which is we gave various people awards. We had a professionals party, which is great fun. I got the convention back on form because in about four years, we hadn't had one because nobody could decide where and when to do it. Yeah. So I made certain that it was every two years. New York was the first convention I did. Then we've had the Manchester ones. Well, the Manchester uh, ones sort of have been a really big success. Big they? success, 5,000 people, 5,000, I wish it was, 500. And well, oh, and yes, we've instituted wonderful competitions. I think they've been fabulous six years for me, certainly, and I, I hope for the society in British flute playing, which is what it's all about. Because I'm a flute fanatic, just in case yeah, you I didn't know. know. Yeah. You can tell people about your house. And, and yes, I've got an amazing house with uh, got 21 rooms, I made it with my own two hands. But there's five rooms devoted to flute figures, big, small pictures, everything. I've got another room, two rooms devoted to music that I keep on buying, but I think it's about time I stopped. I haven't got many flutes though, because I don't really like the flute. Once you've played a wooden little car, you know, all these are a bit of rubbish really. <laughs> well, they are. They're just, they're so easy to blow. You know, pick it up and, I mean, you can make a sound. The little carts, you can't. You have to use all your body and all your strength. But when you can manage to play a wooden flute, you have much more finesse and control. These are yeah. too easy. Oh yeah, I think you might you might be on something there. Did you play your rudder cart in the um, Liverpool? Field? Yeah, yes, I played it. I did. Uh, did. 13 years as principal in the, in, the, in the RLPO, which are fantastic years. And I always play the wooden riddle cart, and never forget when Ron Paul came and did a concerto with us, I said, have a go at my flute. He said, what? That ancient museum piece? He played it and said, it doesn't work. How do you do it? I said, ah, but it's got a, I almost said a better sound than yours, but I didn't. I said, it's got a really great sound. And tell us about um, you getting that job, because it's quite an interesting story, isn't it? Somebody might be listening, you know, it's, and Jimmy always never got over it. Well, first of all, I think what people, when I die, let's get, you know, I'm getting on for 17 next year, people will suddenly realise I'm a legend, because I was the second woman in the world to actually have a principal job, keep it, and do it. There's been a few women who've had jobs for a certain amount of times, but to actually do it, have a baby, etc., etc., I was probably the second woman in the world. So when I, were, I left, the, I left uh, the academy when I was 21, I went to Paris on a French government scholarship. And I was, I just got married as well. And when I was in, in, in Paris, they offered me second flute in Sadler's Wells, okay. which was pretty good going in those days. And I, and I thought about it and I said, I'm just not second flute. I mean, I'm not the right temperament. I tried for the Birmingham Orchestra and Rignol didn't give me the piccolo job. And I said, why not? I was way out the best player. He said, yes, but you just haven't got the temperament to be a piccolo player. Which is right. I mean, Pat Morris has the temperament to be a piccolo yeah, player. Yeah. So uh, then I went for another three months in the Ballet Rock there, and then again I was, uh, I was I was having a holiday in Yugoslavia. I'll never forget this. And I got a telegram: first flute in the Wells, Galway's leaving. I thought fantastic. So I did three months in the Wells. The first, very first day I did in South as Wells, we did Carmen, and Colin Chambers was uh, Colin Chambers Ford, uh, Colin Davis was in one of his funny moods. He was going to conduct the whole of Carmen with one hand. Okay. Um, and I'd never played it in all those flute entries. I'll never forget, do you know what's this piece? What is it? Um, the dance of the... Bohemian dance. Bohemian dance. You've got one, two, three. Right, I, he, on principle he brought me in after two bars to be funny. I mean, it was just a nightmare. <laughs> At any rate, then the job came. I was on the way back um, on a train and somebody sat, was talking to me, gossiping. He said, oh, did you know Fritz Spiegel's leaving the film? And I didn't know. So why don't you try for the job? So I then saw it advertised and uh, I did an audition, etc., etc., etc. And it boiled down to me and Jimmy. And they gave us the flute solo from Matthias de Marla, if you know, to sight read. No. It had just been oh, written. I think you showed that to me hellish, before. Hellish. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all my life I've always loved sight reading. I used to turn, I turn music upside down. I, I just can sight read anything at all you want to give me, I'll sight read it. Yeah. And they gave me this and it was like all my training from the age of 12 when I started the flute was for that moment. And I'll never forget every bar, but I played it perfectly. Well, Jimmy hasn't got the eyesight to, to, to read that, you know, he was like this. 
At any rate, they gave off, they phoned me the next day and offered me the job, not Jimmy, and I started. And I, I, th I think Jimmy and I, we haven't quarreled about it, but he did tell the Liverpool audiences how unlucky they were to have me instead of him. <laughs> Which I thought was a bit rude, frankly, because orchestral playing is just my... For example, I'll do a test with you. Now, at the beer fest, one of the things oh, I always do... Yeah. I know, no, one of the things I always do at the beer fest, I do quizzes. I've yeah. invented hundreds of quizzes. For example, what piece well, is why this? Why don't we maybe do a quiz for the audience? A quiz? Okay, I'm going to give you ten things, right? What is this piece? Got it? There's only one piece that starts like that. Yeah? Well, I know. I bet you know, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay so that's number one. Number, number two. two. <laughs> that's given it away, hasn't it? I think so, yeah. Number three. <laughs> Got it? And the vibrato, I need to guess it then, yeah. And the, are these orchestral solos? They're always orchestral solos, okay, yeah. nothing else is real and fluid, they're rubbish, our repertoire. The orchestral, and this one, I don't think of another one, another, these are all orchestral solos. They're so... Number four, got it? If you don't know, this we is just my do, recording. We just do five. I know actually. you're bored of this. No, no, I'm not know. bored, but um, we need to, Number I five. need to make a note of these afterwards. There we are, five of them. There we are. Okay, so um, I'm just setting out this flute. I'm not sure about this. It's a new Altus. My old ones have a load of rubbish. <laughs> but I want to ask you. You sp um, spoke about Jimmy, but you're, I know you're quite a big admirer of his playing, aren't you? Of course. Yeah. Can you these stop? Because I think I'm. Yeah. Sixty-two million records he's made. The thing I think people underestimate really is how Jimmy has affected the entire flute world. A lot yeah. of people earn money by playing concertos, that might not be his league, but if you can't get Jimmy, you get other people. Or other people have done <coughs> recordings because the, the companies can't get Jimmy, so they use other people. They've given everybody else in the flute world a chance to do recordings, to do concertos, yeah. chamber music. He's built up a whole world for other people, and that's what we yeah. tend not to take yeah. into account. Also, so many people learn, which gives teachers jobs. And I think we all underestimated that he turned around the whole of the flute world. Yeah. The current, there's not as many clarinet players at Oboes. We haven't had anybody. Yeah. Well, the they clarinet. took up the flute because of him. I'm well, most people did. did. Yeah. Mind you, a lot, a lot of them took up for me because they came to my kids' <laughs> concerts. But I mean, then the clarinet, who we had, Brimer was a great inspirer in his day. But we yeah. haven't had anybody in other yeah. instruments. I mean, Jimmy's just a genius.